I've, I've long been fond of Cardozo. I go to a lot of law schools, but the questions here tend to be particularly well informed and lively. Um, and as with much of the American public, there does seem to be a, a fascination with the Supreme Court. And to the extent I can try to help bring a little bit of that into perspective, that's a pleasure as well. On Monday, March 12th, Cardozo students were given an inside look at the Supreme Court when New York Times Supreme Court reporter Adam Liptak visited the school. He lectured students in David Rudenstein's constitutional law class and met with them in the Public Service Department before attending a reception in his honor. I don't think the court is political in the sense of partisan politics. I do think it might be said to be political in a very specialized sense of the word political, that the justices do bring judicial ideologies to the bench with them, which often but not always align with the political sentiments of, of many people, but not always. And you do, do see telling exceptions, as for instance when Justice Scalia uh, believes that the original meaning of the Constitution requires some protection for criminal defendants at sentencing, requires some protection for criminal defendants who want to confront uh, witnesses at trial, and in those cases his adherence to originalism becomes a friend of the criminal defendant in a way that might well not accord with his own policy preferences. Many gay rights advocates were unhappy that Ted Olson and David Boies brought their constitutional challenge and would be happier if the court got to the issue later rather than sooner. So there's an argument at least that slow walking that case as public opinion seems to be moving in the direction of greater approval of same-sex marriage would be a good thing for the gay rights cause or at least that's what some gay rights analysts say. What we have now going on in the case is exactly that by happenstance where the Ninth Circuit has kicked the, uh, a question over to the California Supreme Court which will kick it back to the Ninth Circuit. So that may be slowing down even as a separate gay rights case, the DOMA case is winding its way up to the courts. Defense and that, the Defense of Marriage Act case is, is winding its way up to the courts. And that may in some ways be the more attractive case to a pro-gay rights perspective because all it's saying is, listen, people in Massachusetts are legally married. Should the federal government follow what the state has decided to do in that case? Very different question from should the Supreme Court, should the federal government tell California what to do? Uh, so there's an argument to be made that the Defense of Marriage Act case would be a good case to come first and to have the same-sex marriage case come later. There is a sense in which many justices on the court have uh, been comfortable with fairly uh, broad uses of federal power, but this is further than uh, Congress has gone before. I don't think that's in dispute. And the, que the question of just because Congress hasn't done it so far, does that mean Congress may not do it, is an interesting question. Judge Michael McConnell, formerly on the Tenth Circuit, now at Stanford, makes the point that that doesn't answer the question. Sometimes people think that's the end of the discussion. Con Congress has never done this, therefore it cannot do it. He doesn't think that's the right way to think about it. Uh, it really requires uh, attention to constitutional text and history and precedent. I can't think of a good argument against cameras in the courtroom. I think it's an odd thing for us to deny to most Americans the opportunity to see one of its branches of government in action. And what they'd see are a bunch of very uh, capable and diligent uh, judges trying to make sense of very difficult legal issues.